Okay, we've um, taken a look at three different sections, uh, starting at Wells Road, this is the existing home, Susie Terran's right here, going parallel to Wells Road, cutting a section through there. Another section was cut diagonally through the back corner. Another section was cut um, almost perpendicular to the home, uh, going to the proposed site of another house on the hillside, which would be one of the first homes to be constructed. The, the A diagram here uh, is the cross section taken through the entrance row. Um, these numbers that we're uh, using on the diagram represent the, the distance from the face of the existing home. It's not the distance between the tick marks. So at this point, the property line is 120 feet from the house, and the edge of the paved area is 200 feet. So from that point of the home over to the edge of the uh, the proposed driveway going in, the roadway going in, we have a distance of 200 feet. More significantly though, is not just the distance that separates the traffic going by, but it's also the change in elevation. Because the road does go up uh, through a, a, a short section, segment of red rock outcrop at that point, uh, the road would be depressed. Uh, here's a typical car about five and a half feet. We're looking at a grade change of about six feet as it goes through uh, the rock cut at this point uh, for the first uh, 150 feet or so. The net effect of doing that is that someone standing at the house looking over in this direction is not going to see the tops of the cars at all because they're essentially buried in this, this short segment of, of rock outcrop through here. Um, as we continue along, going to the back corner, um, uh, an addition that was made to the plan that was not on the, the landscape plan that was in your package was to take the landscape material, the, the earth berm, uh, and the additional uh, landscape uh, trees, the uh, evergreen trees, wrapping it around the corner, perhaps even reinforcing it with a fence if that was necessary. Again, starting at the, the corner of the house, going back to the property corner, we're dealing with a distance of, three, of 250 feet. By the time we get to the edge of the road, we're looking at a little over 300 feet. And by adding uh, a buffer of white pines or fir trees, we feel again that a person standing at the home would not be able to see cars going by. Um, if we needed some additional buffering, uh, there could be some fencing, some stockade fencing put in that area. So we're looking at a distance greater than a football field from that corner back to the beginning of the pavement for the roadway. We have moved it out about 40 or 50 feet since the last time we brought the, brought the issue before the planning board. And I think the area probably of more concern though is that someone in the back of the home looking back towards the, the backyard. What is that individual going to see? Uh, we know there are a number of, of trees back here. There is an opening uh, where vegetation is either very light or non-existent. So this section at the bottom, section three, looks through the back of the, the, uh, the home uh, over an earth berm that we're creating that would be planted with evergreen material through a small wetland area that would be planted with willow trees, uh, past the roadway, and then to a home that would be built on a small knoll on the other side there. Again, starting at the home, going 140 feet to the property line, over the next 40 feet or so uh, is where we would put a small rolling earth berm, uh, upon which would be planted a series of evergreen trees, uh, reinforced by willow trees and probably red maple through there. Uh, the berm itself would probably be in the vicinity of, of four, five, six feet tall. Uh, the trees that would be planted would be in the vicinity of eight to 12 feet in height. Uh, the, home and, uh, the home itself uh, would be separated not only by the earth berm of the plantings, but also by distance. The edge of the road at that point as 275 feet from the home, and the nearest house would be 340 feet, as we're showing right here. There would also be street trees and preserved vegetation which you're not showing on the diagram. So that's where we are in the discussion uh, on the location of the entrance road. We had, we had shown the last time a perspective sketch that our office had done to illustrate the character of the landscape coming in here. It's our intent to save as many trees as possible to have a sidewalk on one side to reinforce that with uh, trees planted in the esplanade. Turn it back over to the planning board for comments. <coughs> comments? Uh, 
I'll go ahead since nobody else is saying anything yet. Uh, thank you, Terry. That's quite a bit of work, and I know a lot of effort to get all those dimensions and uh, to show the cross-section schematically. As the chairman uh, said earlier this evening, we also have uh, photographs that have been prepared by the applicant that show view from uh, her house facing, uh, from Susie Terrian's house facing, facing across the road to the south, as well as looking uh, to the east at the proposed road access, and then looking from <coughs> the, uh, uh, the Layton's uh, field back up toward the Layton farmstead. Uh, I have, uh, I guess, a couple of questions uh, with respect. I, I was pleasantly surprised in going by the site, although we had a site walk some time ago, um, to learn, uh, for some reason, with all of the public that had come before the board, I had understood that uh, an access drive placed on the inside of the, the turn uh, in about the location where you show, Terry, perhaps a little more to the east, uh, would exit opposite an open field, not opposite uh, existing, no, um, no the, uh, there, yeah, that one. There's an open field across the road from, from that location, as far as I recall. It's not a, there are houses beyond that. Um, and uh, a concern, obviously, was whether or not all of that development would spill out across from, a, from a, an existing house. It's not to say that somebody in the future might not want to build a house there. It may be the applicant's uh, own property, I suspect it is. Um, but I'm wondering, since the existing driveway now does not go straight up the hill, but rather turns to the right, um, to allow for a shallower uh, grade and slope, would it not be reasonable to expect that the proposed alternate would also follow some sort of a more current curvilinear alignment and perhaps meet um, over to the northeast, uh, perhaps more, perhaps uh, just up and above uh, to the west of uh, the corner of Susie Terrian's property? Uh, it would come in, bend to the right, and then bend to the left in order and, and cross the contours at a diagonal rather than going straight up the slope. You're talking I'm, about this area? Yeah, I'm wondering why you went straight up the hill rather than sort of curving it to the right and then curving it back around to the left. That's, I'm not dealing with a safety issue here. I'm dealing with the issue of, of uh, steepness of slope. Um, a number of reasons. There are some trees in the area there that uh, we feel would be easier saved if it was in that location. Uh, you know, this is this is not uh, a detailed design that mm -hmm. uh, we're proposing to build at this point. This is simply the, the shortest way to get from the top to the bottom there. I'm always I'm always concerned when two alternates are shown and one alternate is made to be a. Uh, this is not. I, I know this is a quick study, but it's made to be s so bad that uh, nobody is going to take serious consideration of it. The way I like to think of it is if, if, uh, and I know this is difficult as an applicant, but if the task is to make this, this is the only way you can get into the site, how would one solve that problem uh, successfully? I think that's sort of the positive approach to take, uh, take to that uh, process and then let the two, the safety issues uh, and, and other issues weigh out uh, whether it's preferable to have it come in up on the inside of a corner or whether the impacts on the Layton's pro property and the Tarian property are, are significant enough or not significant enough. Juan had a few comments on uh, Just to clear a point, Mr. Emery, mm -hmm. uh, the property right here it is not owned by myself okay. or anybody uh, in my corporation. To the best of my knowledge, that property is owned by Mary McCushin, who is the current wife of George Terrian. Okay. So I would have no interest in, you know, I mean, there's nothing, it's not my property, I don't own it, and it's not mine. Okay. Just for the record. That's fine. Thank you for that uh, clarification. <clears throat> now I'm really in trouble. <laughs> Uh, uh, but but the, the, the point is that uh, in any case, it, it, it does exit opposite an open field. I, there was a, one of the people from the public had talked about waiting in front of their house for the bus to go by, and I had this, this image that the house was actually uh, opposite uh, a location for that uh, alternative location for the driveway, and that the safety issue was the fact that the buses would be interfering with the turning traffic. Um, I was pleased to see that, in fact, that's an open field, and, and at least for the present time, there's not a direct impact. And if one were to build a house uh, on that open field, one would have the, after this new access road were located there, one would have the foreknowledge to place the new house appropriately. 
Um, I, I'm not totally convinced that if uh, I'm not totally convinced of the safety issue. I will admit that putting a uh, access road on the inside of a curve is not the ideal situation. For all of, for that sake, most of Wells Road is not the ideal situation. It's a hilly, curvy road. I used to run it a lot, and uh, one never knows what's coming around the next corner. But accordingly, one either uses the road appropriately, or, or um, I mean, if you're jogging. Uh, try you try to run uh, with a, with a mind on on traffic, and secondly through traffic control and signage, and uh, in the same way Shore Road is somewhat self policing. Um, I think as long as we can get sight lines, sight distances to the minimum necessary at that location, it's worth studying a, an alternative alignment there that would blend in with the existing house. Uh, take advantage of the field as a focal point and and wind its way or wind its way up over the hill. I think it, it's, it's focal to the entire, it's center to the entire development. It doesn't feel as though it's squeezed between two house sites uh, and, and is, a, is an appropriate alternative to study. Well, I guess I'd like to think that we have studied those alternatives. I, I don't think of this location right here as being squeezed between two house sites. That distance from this point to the access row, as we're showing in cross section A, is 120 feet. Mm -hmm. We have a, a right of way at that point, uh, which measured diagonally or perpendicular to the lines is 110 feet. This is not just a little park job 50 feet wide coming down here. We did have quite a bit of leeway in terms of aligning the road as it came through there. Because of the concern for buffering, we have moved it as far to the east as, pos as possible uh, in light of dealing with the town's ordinances. I'd like to second, excuse me, is anybody else going to talk? <laughs> I'd like to, uh, to second everything that Mr. Emery has suggested. I do appreciate the effort that you've obviously gone to to try to give us more of a sense of, of what, the, uh, what the improved first site would look like, uh, but the, the starkness of the proposed alternative is uh, it's just clearly not as nice as it as it could be. And I'm very glad that we still have a site walk scheduled for Saturday a week, I think, the morning of the 27th. And I, for one, will certainly be uh, looking quite seriously at that um, proposed alternative. We, we did look at Mark Kerbley or Lyman coming in at this point, starting at that point right there. And again, using uh, the criteria of the ordinance, have moved it very close to the side uh, of the um, of the barn right there. We, uh, Mr. Perez felt that it was really uh, an unacceptable uh, distance to be set back from his, uh, from his apartments right there. It also results in the loss of several large trees in that area. You're right, I would not like to see the road designed as straight as that. <laughs> I know that's what you're getting at. Uh, but I think the bottom line is that you know, there are two points of access. This one clearly is safer. This one tends to do what we want to do in terms of creating an appropriate relationship between the road and the neighborhood coming in. There is the opportunity to provide the buffer in this area. And we feel that um, on weight, this one is clearly the superior access point. <clears throat> Mr. Epps, Chair. Um, let's get a little bit off the wall, but I mean, um, number one, I, I was by this property again at the end of last week, I guess it was, and I was um, struck by, um, wasn't struck, not literally, but, uh, <laughs> noted that the, the, the safety of the inside of the, the curve location um, was more, or the lack of safety of that location. Um, was more pronounced than I remembered it to be. So I, I think the site walk will enhance it. I mean, I, my view was from the car uh, as I was driving that road, um, and it, the sight distance is certainly noticeably stronger or better uh, at where you're proposing this. Um, I was also struck by the um, what appeared to be a, a lack of requirement to cut into, um, in other words, looking back uh, to the west from having gone 
past the Tarrant home back that way. That doesn't seem to be that much rock outcropping that will will uh, be there, but that may just be my eye didn't pick that up. Which what? location are you referring to? Um, existing right, exactly right there. Looking back to the to the west, um, and uh, struck by uh, didn't seem to to be much protection at, at that turn. The real meat of my question is, has to do with, with um, that we've focused on this being the main entrance, I guess, to this subdivision. What's driven that? I, I quickly look through the, the traffic report and so forth and probably um, be relieved to know that I don't do traffic reports. I don't understand them. So, um, what, what drove, you know, what are, what are the, I guess it would be uh, trip gen generators that would require that this is really the main entrance versus the main entrance being on Sawyer? I mean, what, what made the decision? Is it the, dens uh, the, the density of, of location of homes? I look at the small drawing, it doesn't, it looks pretty well balanced from, from end to end. Um, other than, than school traffic, What's what's what makes this the main entrance? I mean, uh, versus the Sawyer entrance being the main entrance. There are already subdivisions on that side that are fairly heavily traveled. Uh, the road is better. It's closer to town. When you say main entrance, I think uh, you know, I guess I see a point of access here, another point of access at the other end. Well, we're focusing on this basically as the main entrance. When in essence, there are two main entrances. There, there are two points of access. Right. right. I, I didn't quickly cut out, and, and I think some of the talk has been about all of the trips will always go out, come and go through this one access. When just rationally, that doesn't necessarily make sense to me. I think what Jack Murphy has shown that by his projection, based upon his knowledge of travel distance, desire lines, and so forth, of roughly two-thirds of the trips will come and go from this point, and a third of them will go down to the other point. Do you, do you remember what, what, I saw those numbers, and, and I would confer that, that it was a, a one-third, two-thirds, but do you remember what, what caused that? I don't, I don't want to dwell on it. So okay. yeah, sometimes I know uh, traffic engineering seems to be more I, just, I, I personally science. get caught up in the idea that this is the main entrance one indeed. Well, well, I think part of it is a perception that uh, for some time and, and uh, that period not being known is this will be the only access to the site and certainly for trips to the town center to the town dump to the, to the schools, schools which yeah. are a lot of the trips um, uh, and, perhaps, know and perhaps a split for people going down uh, Wells Road to Spurwink and 077 <coughs> to get into Portland um, versus going out Sawyer Road and, uh, and, and then across to uh, down, down Sawyer the other way uh, to 77. Um, it's anyone's guess. But I, my, my general perception is for everyone who lives east of this site, this will be the, the main entrance to the property. If you go visit this subdivision, you're going to approach it Principally, I mean, if you go from Mitchell Road, you're probably going to end up coming down Scott Dyer and up over Wells Road, I would think. I'm just thinking that, that, that in order to support a lot of these, uh, these homes, there will probably be two family wage earners uh, in, in those homes. And, and mm -hmm. uh, both my wife and I head towards Portland to go to work. And, uh, regardless of which end of the, the subdivision we lived on, uh, we wouldn't come out this one. I, I, I don't know. You know I'm just... Uh, well, Jack Murphy bases estimations on the Institute of Tra Transportation Engineers, their trip generation report for this number of homes. He's looking at the peak hour that you're going to see 102 um, trips on, uh, through here. And that 66 will be entering, um, 44 from this location, and 20 coming in uh, off of Sawyer. At the same time, there'll be 36 exiting. There'll be 25 going out here, 11 going out at the other end. It's a new subway in Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's a heck of a vacuum cleaner. It's not a vacuum. I have a question <coughs> for the town planner. Mm -hmm. We can pay attention. I don't know. Somebody will. While. It's like the food's going nuts. I think it's wind. Yeah, that does sound like. Where's the boiler located in the building? Just sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you might want to just take a minute. Pause for a minute. He's got a He's got a rotor. Oh. It's 
No. Um, for the, those of you at home, we had a very strong vibration, some fairly loud noises in the, <laughs> the meeting room. That's what we were all looking sort of funny about. Anyway. It wasn't just the hour. <laughs> I have a question for the town planner. Um, I don't think since my time on the planning board that we've ever done this, but uh, would the planning board ever recommend that the speed limit on a road be reduced, say, from 30 to 25, based on the significant impact of traffic? The, the board can make that recommendation. I'm, I can't think of a time when you've recommended it either, but um, speed limits are going to be reduced either by the town council if it's a local road, or uh, the town council can petition the state if it's a state road. Uh, so certainly you, you could make that recommendation, but there's absolutely no guarantee that it would be you know, to ever be implemented. We could also reclassify the road as a planning board, couldn't we? Well, no, we changed the ordinance. Uh -huh. The road classifications are now done by the council. Oh, uh, shoot. But, but Wells Road <coughs> at this point and Sawyer Road both are town roads at this point, right? I would want to double check that. I, I would just say as a resident of Mitchell Road, Changing speed limits uh, for the town council is not an easy process. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Yeah, I think we're going to be looking for some very serious numbers to justify it. You know, mm -hmm. right now, you know, just looking at Jack's numbers, the no build volumes in '98 call for about you know, one car a minute at the peak hour. We're going to be adding about one and a half extra cars per minute. Just looking at those sort of numbers, uh, you know, one car going in, half a car going out every minute, one car every two minutes. That's, to me, not an awful lot of additional volume during the peak hour. Stated another way, it's doubling it, isn't it? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Stating it though, as a percentage of the capacity of the road, it's... In, that's right. Yeah. I'd like to note that it's 20 minutes to 10. I don't know how much longer we're going to go on this. I am interested in, I don't know how much else we're going to say on the access point. I'm, I, I am interested in the phasing, but also particularly interested in the community impact statement because I still have a sense that we're not um, gelling with respect to what the board is interested in seeing and what the applicant is, is doing a lot of work to try to produce. So I don't know whether you want to try to hit that quickly before we adjourn or just what you'd like to do. Can I ask one more question? I have, I have just one final question before we leave the access point. Perhaps you could clarify so that when we go out in the field eventually uh, we'd be able to know uh, what property we're on. Uh, this area that you're talking about on and have shown on the sketch uh, on the uh, boundary survey is indicated as being owned by another entity. Uh, it is indicated as being owned by the Maine Summer Institute for English Language Studies. And uh, Mr. Perez just noted that it was not under his control. No, he was talking about the land on the other side of the street. On the other side yeah. of the street. Oh, okay. Could you... Uh, so is that, in fact, formally of the Maine Summer Institute for English Language Studies at this point? It does have uh, yes. miscellaneous improvements in already. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I assume you're reading from what we're saying here that we would like to see some more work on this access issue? Well, we'd like to see it in the field, I think, is what I'm hearing people say. It's really a three-dimensional problem. Yeah. And, and in all seriousness, I think the applicant has done uh, everything that we've asked him to do in terms of trying to demonstrate uh, how to minimize the impact on uh, Susie Terrian's <coughs> house. Uh, I think it, it does, uh, does warrant uh, further investigation in the field, both that of proposed alignment as well as a possible alignment uh, from uh, inside the curve. It's sort of, a, sort of a nice looking driveway going up through there uh, under phase one on your little sketch here. And it curves to the right and then banks to the left and wends its way up through there quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a driveway though. It looks like a long driveway connecting from Wells Road past the uh, apartments and then back up toward that uh, loop road. 
fourteen percent, though. <laughs> Would it be terribly difficult to put something together that would show us um, what it would look like to put an entranceway in the general location of the the non-preferred um, entranceway from your viewpoint, as to you know to create the safe site distance that we would you would need, and also what it would you know might look like and what it might cost. Could we also well, we could do that. Could we also have comment though by public safety officials? Because I think that we're, we're missing that, that note of reality here. People that are going to have to you know, enforce the speed limits to make sure that these are safe intersections. The only thing I might add to that is, is that, um, to also take a look at what artifacts might be able to be removed within the right of way to straighten that curve slightly. I know it can't be straightened all the way, but the right of way does bear to the north there quite a ways. Um, and so that there may be some of that that can be removed to, to improve that. What are you talking about? Approximately where the, the brown uh, straight road there on that curve, um, I think if you look at the, the right of way, um, there's room to the north side of the current existing travel way uh, to either, there's, there's a fairly, uh, I, I don't even know that it will improve the site distance one iota, but uh, I think it's worth taking a look at it if, if there's... Uh, we, we would do that in the, in the sketch that Steve has asked for, yeah, to okay. show which, which trees along here would have to come out, how much the grade would have to be peeled away. This line right here that I'm showing is what you'd have to, to clear to achieve 300 feet of side distance. Mm -hmm. This line right here shows 350 feet of side distance. 350 feet is not going to be attainable because it hits the corner of the garage right there. Now, I don't know what the average speed going through there is. Most, most traffic engineers will, will use radar detectors to determine how fast people go through there and use that as the benchmark, not necessarily what the posted speed is. I haven't heard people talk about what they, how people travel through there. But knowing that we can get you know, more site distance over here uh, kind of begs the question, how much can you conceivably get at this location down here? And then is it simply a matter of comparing site distances at both locations? Right. Yeah, and I, I think it's worth reinforcing this issue of putting this development in context. Uh, as I've said many times, it is in a, in a designated growth area, but it's also for the scale of development in Cape Elizabeth, the largest uh, development that has come before the planning board in some time, if not in all time. Uh, and I think what the board is attempting to do here is to, in public, provide the type of discussion necessary to uh, allow the abutters who have attended most of our meetings to be convinced at the same time we're convinced that you as the applicant are doing everything that's reasonably possible to try to accommodate their concerns. Um, and, and I think in the magnitude of all of that, that, that this request to look very seriously, almost as a design competition problem, if you had to put in a, a very sensitively designed access road, uh, and what would it take to, to make the, the sight lines work, and uh, run the flag up the pole and let's see how far it, fl it flies. Knowing also that we've heard testimony from other people who live in this mm -hmm. neighborhood who have just as much concern as the butter on the other side does. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, we have to balance you know, competing interests here. That's right. <laughs> Enough said. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to get a consensus from the board. We're getting close to 10 o'clock here. I would. I, for one, would like to end this at 10 if we could. Um, doesn't seem to be any argument also, from either side yes. here. So let's see how far we okay. can get um, or 10 and then stop it. Can we try and get through a little bit of, of uh, community impact analysis? I would love to hear your reactions to what we've handed out the last time. Did, did all of you get a copy of that? We have provided you with three tables. Uh, one was a uh, look at the impact on roads. The second was looking at solid waste. And the third, looking at projected <coughs> tax revenues for each of the five phases.
do all of you have those three? Okay. Um, knowing that there's a lot more community impacts that are addressed in the comprehensive plan and in the, uh, the zoning ordinance, we felt that looking at roads and solid waste were two just to get a handle on them because they do deal with very measurable and quantifiable parts of line item budgets. Um, we had made contacts, this is Joy Ernst from my office, did most of this work uh, to public works directors. We looked at the budget with the projected uh, cost. We got very specific costs for doing things like cleaning catch basins, the amount of money we'd spent on gasoline and diesel, sanding and salting and so forth. Uh, we felt that some items in the public works director's budget would not really be affected by the addition of uh, 98 new homes or, or housing units in this area, but putting two new roads would certainly change the balance of things. Uh, there are now 58 miles of, of roads which are maintained in town. We're now looking at 60, 60 miles of roads. So the question in our minds then, we, we hope that we're dealing with the impact as, you're, as you'd like to see it, what is the dollar amount that the town would be spending per year to maintain the additional roads uh, by the Public Works Department? And what we've done is simply um, outlined in the chart um, the, the various costs, uh, looking at the fiscal year 97 uh, requested amount in the budget. Uh, we've divided uh, the budget by the number of linear miles of road, coming up with a cost per existing mile. We've broken it down by phase, uh, again going back to the initial diagram that we had presented at the workshop meeting, and we'll talk about tonight if there is time, but knowing that the two miles are going to be broken out in some incremental fashion, that on a per year basis it's going to cost those dollar amounts uh, coming up with an added cost on the right hand side of the diagram. Uh, the bottom line is that we're looking over uh, the, the, the time that uh, the starts, the time that um, this kicks in, uh, development of all five phases. We're looking at about $3,000 per year more to maintain these, these sections of roads. Now, um, we have not had this verified by public uh, department. These are based upon numbers that uh, were given to us by them. Uh, but we do feel that there's a good basis for reality in looking at, at uh, road cost maintenance in this, in this respect. And again, we did the same thing on <coughs> solid waste, uh, looking at the tipping fees, looking at how many additional homes would be added to the mix, uh, knowing that at the end of the five phase build out, we'd be looking at an additional $10,000. Uh, added to the $333,000 that are presently paid by the town um, using the, the figures of about one ton of solid waste per year per new dwelling. And similarly, we looked at projected tax revenues, again, on a five-phase basis, uh, using current uh, mill rates, uh, looking at estimated values of market rate homes and, and the low income affordable, the moderate income affordable, uh, looking at the number of homes that may be built in each of the five phases, coming up with um, a total of a little under half a million dollars of additional revenue that would be generated by the development if it were to be taxed at the current mill rate of 18.6 over the next five years. So we have obviously not gone through all the items that we've talked about. You know, there's a lot of other impacts, but we felt that this provides you with a lot more information, a lot more quantifiable information uh, to get a handle on this area community impact. So my question is, this is sort of information that, that you need, uh, that you can use. Is there any fine tuning that's necessary at this point? Mr. Russell? I, I, my impression is, the, um, number one, what you've dealt with so far is about 2% of our total budget. Um, and if it takes as long to get the other 98% of the budget impact uh, in the town, we can't wait that long. Um, I'm, I'm confused or frustrated uh, in that we have said from all along, or I have said all along, this is an extremely important piece of this whole application. And, 
And I, I guess I'm driven to the fact that either one, you don't quite get on uh, get how to do this, or number two, you don't think it's important. Um, and neither one of those are acceptable to me. Um, yes, you've sort of, sort of got the idea, um, but it's sort of like me doing my eighth grade daughter's algebra. Uh, I can get through it. It's kind of ugly um, when I get it done. Um, I'm not going to help, uh, and I don't think it's the, our role or the staff's role to help you put together an impact study. Um, I mean, we've got a $17.8 million uh, budget in this town, $11.8 million of that is the school. Um, th that, I mean, that's the weight of, of this issue, and, and um, uh, there are a lot of, you know, I, I, I'm frustrated because I'm not going to tell you how to write an impact study. I feel like you know, it's almost not worth coming back next month if you can't get something to us. I mean, it shouldn't take 10 hours to write an impact study uh, on this town. And if, if you can't get that done within the next month, um, maybe you just take the amount of time that it needs to, to write it before you come back. Uh, that, that's my, my opinion. Any other, <coughs> any other comments? Yeah, I guess I'm frustrated too, Mr. Dewan, and I, I think that you've obviously spent a lot of time trying to track down these particular things. Um, and I, I guess my sense is that, I don't know, I wish we could hand you 10 impact studies or point you in some direction to, um, I, I, don't, I don't think we're asking for the moon here by a long shot, but something that would be more of a real broad brush approach to the impact on the whole town was really something that I was looking for. It was not our intent that this be our impact no, no, statement. I, I, I think we all realize that. This that seems like, this, you know, like three appendices to something that... The, this is supplemental to a very great volume of information which we developed so far. It was our intent to bring this before you to make sure that we are indeed on the right track. We are intending to go ahead and do the rest of it on libraries, on schools. I know that's the big consideration. What effect will this have on the budget of the school? Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, using these, this approach is, will end up with something that you feel comfortable with. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Emery? Uh, I mentioned at the workshop, I would only, uh, and I think for the applicant's sake as well as ours, uh, if this isn't an appendix that the information be consolidated and, and that it be simplified as much as possible so we don't lose a forest for the trees or vice versa, that, uh, for example, in public works, maintenance might just be a general item and all these are lumped together and we have a cost per mile for maintenance. Um, the other thing that perhaps is more difficult to quantify but can be uh, developed through the interview process is to find out if there's anything unique about Cape Elizabeth in terms of its equipment uh, and those sorts of things. For example, a, a new congregate care facility might trigger a new ladder truck or would have a couple of years ago. And that might have a, temporarily, a temporary and longer term impact on, the, on town budgets. And uh, regardless of whether this applicant is asked to contribute money toward resolving those issues, if you can red flag anything uh, for the board uh, that might be of issue, and, and as well as to the happiness of your uh, potential market, that, that, that they're served well, that the town has the equipment necessary uh, or the facilities necessary to serve the needs of your uh, neighborhood, so to speak. I, I think that's something else that uh, I would be interested in seeing as part of this uh, impact report. Any other comments? In things that uh, I, I just want to sort of uh, back everyone else up at this um, to this point. Um, I'm not sure that this is going to necessitate maybe buying um, some more equipment for the town, maybe hiring another police officer or stuff. I just don't know, and I think it's really incumbent upon you to provide that information to us so we can make um, some decisions and suggestions based on that information. Aren't those decisions that are really a function of the police chief or the fire chief reviewing the information that we've given them and making that decision? No. Yeah, we've, we've, we've talked about you know, crime rate, we've talked about the number of calls, we've talked about the incremental <coughs> percentage that this would necessitate. It's, 
seem like that would be a decision that you know a professional like a fire chief or a police chief would would really have a much better handle on. I think it's your responsibility to to interview them with the data once you get it together and ask them those questions. But it's your accountability to report that to us. I mean, the school capacity, uh, say fire and safety. Uh, uh, capacity, uh, all of the impacts on, on those. I mean, I don't, like I said, I'm not going to go through the litany of, of but it, no. it, it's, it's not that extensive that right. it couldn't be done in a pretty short period of time. Um, but we've been at this for months now and, and not seeing much. Any other comments? We're very close to the 10 o'clock uh, 10 o'clock cutoff time. Um, do we want to stop it at this point? Okay. I have a motion uh, for that from someone. Move to adjourn. No, no. Oh. We've got an application before us. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Just, excuse me, just a point of order. Uh, both for the home viewers and the, and the public that's here, uh, is it clear that what we're doing when we adjourn, do we need to formally table this? or? Yes. Uh, I believe we do, yeah. Right. And you need to schedule a site walk. Okay. Uh, we need to <coughs> schedule a site walk. And that is when? April 27th, it's just Saturday. Saturday, April the 27th at right. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Is, is that the time you want to set? 8 o'clock. It's all right with me. Agree the members of the yeah. public are invited as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to set a meeting place? We met last time near Juan's Barn. Same place? In the parking lot of the... Okay, so that's April 27th at 8 o'clock on Wells Road uh, for the site walk, and the public is invited. And we have a motion to... Mr. Ratzel? Mr. Chair, I have a motion for the Board to consider, be it ordered and based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented in the application of the Minimus Dominicus Crossing Limited Liability Company for preliminary subdivision review and a wetlands alteration permits for Dominicus Crossing in 97 plus lot subdivision located off Wells Road and Sawyer Road be tabled with the consent of the applicant to the regular May 19, May 21st, 1996 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It's unanimous. We hear another motion. Adjourn. Move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> unanimous again. Thank you very much. Before board members leave, did everyone get the, the community and mobility workshop? Yes. yes. Is there anyone who wants to attend? Other than Tom? Like it's a Friday. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, the day. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.